good morning in this video we'll study about the white matter of brain the white matter of brain is present deep to the cerebral cortex you can see this is a cerebral cortex and this is a white matter of brain this white matter is nothing but it is made up of lot of nerve fibers and the neuroglia there are three basic types of white matter of brain the white matter of brain can be classified into three basic type of fibers one is the association fibers the number two is commissural fiber and number three is projection fibers so these are the three basic types of white matter type of fibers which are present in the white matter of brain first we'll study about the association fibers what are these association fibers association fibers connect different regions of the cerebral hemisphere you can see these are the bundles of fibers these are all actually the association fibers which will connect different regions of cerebral hemisphere so these association fibers can be again classified into two types depending on the length of the association fibers so the first one is the short association we can see these are short association fibers because it is short and it will be connecting the adjacent gyri around the sulcus you can see this is the end of the sulcus so around the sulcus it will be connecting the adjacent gyri these are called the short association fibers since it is arcing over the uh, between the two gyri it can be otherwise called as arcuate fibers so mainly it will be connecting between two related functional areas like example the primary motor cortex can be connected to the premotor area something like that okay so these are all the arcuate fibers otherwise called short association fibers then next in our classification we have long association fibers so as the name implies the fibers are the fiber bundles are very long very long it will be connecting to different regions of the cerebral hemisphere different regions like example the frontal lobe is connected to the temporal lobe the frontal lobe is connected to the occipital lobe so the frontal lobe can be connected to the occipital parietal and the temporal lobe so these are all, all examples of long association fibers so what are the main types of long association fibers first one is the uncinate fasciculus you can see this is the uncinate fasciculus which is represented by yellow color this uncinate fasciculus will be connecting the motor speech area as you know here we have the motor speech area area number 44 and 45 area number 44 and 45 this motor speech area along with the orbital part of the frontal lobe is connected to that of the temporal lobe to that of the anterior and temporal pole it is connected to the temporal pole by hooking around the stem of the lateral sulcus by hooking around the stem of the lateral sulcus and this fasciculus is called the uncinate fasciculus it's called the uncinate fasciculus second we can see this orange color bundle this is actually the cingulum the second type of long association fiber is cingulum so above the callosal sulcus so here will be the callosal sulcus above the callosal sulcus the gyrus which is located is called the cingulate gyrus and here along the temporal lobe this gyrus is called the parahippocampal gyrus so this cingulum this bundle of white matter is extending all around the corpus callosum that is along the cingulate gyrus and reaches up to the parahippocampal gyrus and reaches up to the parahippocampal gyrus up to the temporal lobe so this is about cingulum or the cingulate uh, which is present along the cingulate gyrus and the parahippocampal gyrus so the next type of long association fiber is superior longitudinal bundle so as the name implies the superior longitudinal bundle is the bundle of white fiber which is present on the superior most part of the white matter of cerebral hemisphere so this bundle extends from the frontal pole and it crosses all around crosses all over and it will be traveling along the parietal lobe reaches up to the occipital pole it the fibers will be ending some fibers will be ending in the occipital pole and some fiber travel little more anteriorly and it ends in the temporal lobe this is the temporal lobe so this fiber basically connects the frontal lobe to the occipital 
and the temporal lobe. So this is about the superior longitudinal bundle. So this is superior longitudinal bundle. The next fiber what we have to learn is this green color bundle which is represented by green this is a fronto occipital bundle fronto occipital bundle so as the name implies it is the bundle similar to that of the superior longitudinal bundle should be extending from the frontal pole up to the occipital pole and also it extends into the temporal pole temporal lobe so this bundle is called fronto occipital bundle it follows similar fashion as that of the superior longitudinal bundle only thing is these two groups of bundles are separated here by another type of white matter which is actually an example for projection fibers the corona radiata fibers the corona radiata fibers will be separating these two bundles the last type of long association fiber is this one which is called inferior longitudinal bundle is called the inferior longitudinal bundle this inferior longitudinal bundle extends from the occipital pole to the temporal pole to the temporal pole so it actually connects the occipital this area we have visual cortex so this visual cortex is actually connected to the temporal pole by use by the help of inferior longitudinal bundle so these are the examples for long association fibers so this is about the association fibers next we will study about the comm uh, commissural fibers for understanding the commissural fibers we should know about the medial surface of the brain so for the medial surface of the brain i have a different uh, i have already covered in a different video you can refer it now we have to know what are the commissural fibers which are located in the medial aspect of the brain uh, what is this commissural fiber so commissural fibers are the one which connects the two identical cerebral areas of the cerebral hemisphere which are located on the either side of the cerebral hemisphere so it is actually the commissural fibers are one which connects the two identical areas of the cerebral hemisphere okay so what are the different types of commissural fibers we know the largest of the commissural fiber we already discussed about the parts of this largest commissural fiber that is a corpus callosum so this corpus callosum connects the neocortex since it connects the two neocortex it achieves such a big size in the human beings now what are the parts of this corpus callosum the anterior bend is called the genu so this area is called genu which extends little more downwards and posteriorly to form is the rostral end so rostrum is the genu is a trunk and this dilated part is on the posterior aspect is called the splenium so these are the parts of corpus callosum about details of corpus callosum we'll see in our next video next type of commissural fiber is this rounded white bundle which is called the anterior commissure this anterior commissure is located at the upper end of this white fiber which is called the lamina terminalis and it is present anterior to that of this foramen the interventricular foramen and this white fiber which is actually a projection fiber is the fornix so it is present anterior to fornix and the interventricular foramen and it is present at the upper end of the lamina terminalis this commissural fiber you can divide into anterior and the posterior part so this anterior part will be connecting the olfactory area of the both sides so it will be connecting the olfactory region of both sides the anterior part the posterior part mainly connects the inferior aspect and the anterior end of the temporal lobe on either side so it will be mainly connecting the fibers will be mainly connecting the inferior part inferior part and the anterior end of the temporal lobe on either side so if you see in the specimen so this is the corpus callosum so anterior end is a genu is a rostrum genu the trunk and the splenium and in front of the rostrum you can see here so this is actually the corpus callosum the first largest type of the commissural fiber which will be connecting the two neocortex second one you can see here this bundle of white matter this bundle of white matter here is called the 
anterior commissure which will be connecting the anterior part will be connecting the orbital uh, which will be connecting the olfactory region and the posterior part of this white fiber white bundle will be connecting the temporal lobe so the anterior end of the temporal lobe and the inferior part of the temporal lobe on either side next type of commissural fiber what we are going to see is at the posterior aspect that is the posterior commissure next commissure or commissural fiber what we are going to study is a posterior commissure as we see it is located very close to the pineal gland you can see this is this green color structure is the pineal gland so uh, splenium of the corpus callosum so posterior end of the corpus callosum you can see is a posterior end of the corpus callosum just below the corpus callosum we have the pineal gland so this pineal gland has got two stalks you can see there is two stalks through the inferior lamina of the stalk of the pineal gland we have the posterior commissure along the inferior lamina of the stalk of the pineal gland we have this posterior commissure this posterior commissure mainly connects this region on either side this is actually the superior colliculus of the midbrain so this is a superior colliculus so the superior colliculus on either side is mainly connected by the posterior commissure other than the superior colliculus it also connects pretectal and interstitial nucleus also so this is about the posterior commissure now if you see above this pineal gland above this pineal gland you have one more small bundle white bundle which will be connecting the two hebanular nucleus called the hebanular commissure so this hebanular commissure will be connecting the two hebanular nucleus so this hebanular commissure is passing through the superior lamina of the pineal gland you can see it is passing through the superior lamina of this pineal gland so this is the posterior commissure along the inferior lamina and along the superior lamina we have the hebanular commissure now the last type of commissural fiber what we are going to see is present between this mass of white matter the fornix so present between the fornix on its posterior aspect so this is called the hippocampal commissure so this is called hippocampal commissure otherwise called the commissure of fornix so otherwise called the commissure of fornix so this commissure which is present between the two fornix between the two sides of the fornix on the posterior aspect along the near to the corpus callosum is called the hippocampal commissure or the commissure of the fornix so these are all the types of commissural fibers next we will study about the projection fibers so before going into the projection fiber, we will see the specimen and then we can study the projection fibers now if you closely see the posterior end posterior end this is actually the splenium of the corpus callosum then what you see here this is the pineal gland this is the pineal gland so these are the stalks of the pineal gland okay these are the stalks so here we have the hebanular commissure and here we have the posterior commissure so this is the pineal gland and here we have the hebanular commissure and along the inferior aspect we have the posterior commissure to study the projection fibers we have taken a longitudinal section of brain you can see this is actually the frontal pole oxy, uh, the occipital pole and this is the temporal pole we have taken a longitudinal section here and we are going to study the projection fibers so this is a white matter what you are seeing here is a white matter and these projection fibers are nothing but which will connect the cortex which will be connecting the cortex to that of subcortical centers so these are all the subcortical centers which will be connecting the cortex to that of the subcortical centers which are present along the cerebrum and also the brain stem and at last it can also travel along the spinal cord so that is about the projection fiber so what is this projection fiber it will be connecting the cortex to the subcortical gray matters and also to that of the spinal cord depending on the direction of fibers we can name it like if the fibers are coming towards the cerebral cortex if the fibers are coming towards the cerebral cortex it is called centrifugal fibers these are called the centrifugal fibers if the fibers are going away from the cerebral cortex these groups of fibers are called the centripetal fibers okay now we'll study what are the different types of what are the names of these projection fibers the most important projection fibers is the bundle is internal capsule the details of internal capsule we'll study in a different video just i'll show you the internal capsule 
to study the internal capsule this is actually the cross section of brain you can see this is actually the cross section of brain after taking cross section of brain immediately we can see this is actually at the level of thalamus so this is actually the thalamus and here we have the caudate nucleus so immediately we have thalamus and caudate nucleus laterally we can see this is actually the lentiform nucleus this much actually the lentiform nucleus so between this lentiform nucleus and the thalamus and the caudate nucleus this group of white fibers this is actually somewhat like a v shaped group of white fiber which are projecting this way is called the internal capsule so this internal capsule superiorly which is will be ending as corona radiata and inferiorly it will be continuous downwards as crest cerebri of midbrain so inferiorly it continues down as crest cerebri of midbrain and here superiorly it continues as corona radiata this is a this is about in a uh, little bit about the internal capsule the next important type of projection fiber is a fornix is a fornix which will be which will be actually located at the inferior margin of the septum pellucidum you can see the septum pellucidum will be extending between the corpus callosum and the fornix okay, so the fornix is again an example for projection fibers so these are all the types of white matter fibers which are present in the brain thank you